tuned to perfect fifths. But before we get into how to achieve truly perfect perfect fifths, we must first understand the concept of frequencies. Frequency is the number of times something vibrates back and forth every second, and sometimes we perceive this as a pitch. So you've probably heard of the term A440. What that actually means is, if I play this note here, I'm getting this string to vibrate exactly 440 times every second, and that produces a pitch that we perceive as A. So if I cut that frequency in half, the string is now vibrating at 220 times, which is also an A, and we'll get more into that later. So I'm actually using A441, so the pitch we heard earlier just now isn't quite 440, but actually 441 hertz. So the string is vibrating 441 times every second. I'll get into why I use 441 over 440 later. Doesn't sound very good, does it? So that's because I'm trying to achieve a perfect fifth here, but what I've gotten is not quite perfect. So why don't we fish around until we get it right? That's much better. So what I've actually done is I've actually found a cool ratio between these two notes that produce a perfect fifth. When we talked about frequencies, how fast these two notes are vibrating, this one versus this one, as it turns out, there's actually a ratio of three to two. So for every three times, this note goes, this one goes exactly twice. So we're going one, two, three versus one, two. If I play them together, an exactly a three to two ratio is when they sound the best. So I can also translate this anywhere. translate this anywhere on the cello, and as long as they stay within a 3 to 2 ratio, those are all perfect fifths. When you take A441, cut in half, it becomes 220.5. So the number 441 is very cool because it's divisible by 3. Remember what I mentioned, ratio of 3 to 2, so that means if I want to figure out if this is 220.5, if I take just two-thirds of that, I should get what this frequency is, which as it turns out is 147. I can do that again. 147 is actually also divisible by 3. So I take 2 thirds of 147, I end up at 98 hertz. 98, however, that's where it ends. It is no longer divisible by 3, but that's okay. If I take 2 thirds of 98, I end up with 65 and 1 third. These are all numbers that are still very easy to work with. Most tuners today that you can get on the market that are as dedicated little machines don't understand the concept of three to two. Tuners are actually calibrated to something else we call equal temperament. So instead, when you go from A down to a D, instead of going down a perfect ratio of three down to two, it's going down something closer to two to the seven one twelfths power. That gives you something close to three to two or 1.5. It actually gives you 1.498 something something. So the perfect fifths, that a tuner would give you that it's uh, adjusted to equal temperament will actually give you fifths that are a little bit too small. So you play this, if it's 220.5, instead of giving you 147, it's going to give you 147 plus a little bit. And then here, same thing here, instead of G being 98 hertz, it's giving you 98 and a little bit more. And then G down to C, instead of 65 and one third, you get something closer to 66. So what's going to happen is, eventually, the fifths become really small. And nothing on the cello is in tune that way. So use the tuner only if you understand what the tuner is actually trying to get at. Most of them have a little hertz readout, so follow the hertz more than you follow the needle. So because when the needle is centered, when you're trying to tune your A, D, G, and C, it's actually going to be sharper and sharper and sharper. The system of using perfect fifths having ratios of 3 to 2, and so on, is part of a larger system called just intonation. Just intonation tries to find small whole number ratios between any two intervals to make them sound the best. The cool thing is the human ear can actually hear these intuitively. For example, this major third, if I get it a little bit wrong, doesn't sound too good. The E's a little sharp. I want it to be here. I've actually 
actually produced a frequency ratio of 5 to 4, and so on. And this works for pretty much all of the, all of the different intervals. I won't talk too much about that into this video, but I want to point out that a tuner, if it's equal tempered, will not be able to produce any of these just intonation intervals, which is what the human ear wants to be able to hear. So for that, I'll save it for another video. Thanks for watching.